He's been selected for the European Team Championships. It's a warm welcome, Charlie Myers. Hi, thanks. Yeah, it's nice to be here. Thank you very much. So the, the first question is, uh, you have been named for the European teams, which uh, men's pole vault is on Sunday week. So you are going to be vaulting Thursday night in Manchester and then Sunday morning in Poland. Yeah, yeah. So it was, I was kind of waiting to see if I was going to be selected and stuff like that. And then I, I always kind of planned to do Manchester. It was just kind of to see if um, they would allow me to fly out the next day. So as soon as... As soon as I got the call, I kind of made that question of like, can I um, can I fly out on my own on on the Thursday? So they came back and said, yeah, yeah, that's fine. I think there's a few other guys who are who are doing the same, who are also doing uh, Manchester and flying out. So um, yeah, competing there. Then the next morning at seven a.m., I'll be flying out to um, to Poland. So we had another one of those horror stories in the uh, media quite recently, where somebody had their pole sawn in half by an airline. Uh, or in transit, it seems to be an occupational hazard. Have you had any of those experiences? It's it's difficult, isn't it? For <laughs> oh yeah, it's a nightmare. Um, yeah, so I've I've had a few kind of uh, things that happen where um, my poles haven't turned up um, and stuff like that. But I have never had them where they've been kind of sawn in half or anything like that before. So. Fingers crossed, you never think it's going to happen to you until it does, so yeah, fingers crossed it doesn't. And have you ever had the, the equally nightmarish experience of, of going through all of that logistical nightmare of taking your, your poles with you across continents and then no hiding at your opening height? Um, yeah, I'm trying to think. Um, well, touch wood, I've never no hated at a comp outside of the UK, so... Uh, it hasn't been it hasn't been too bad that way. I've only ever like had to travel in the UK for it. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's just one of those things that you you never think it's going to happen to you to you until it does. Um, and then it's just a nightmare when you turn the next day and the dish the the uh, flights and the poles aren't there and you just got to like ring up everyone and try and figure out where they are because you don't know where they are. They don't know where they are and then uh, things like that. Yeah. And sometimes with the poles you can't get like a direct flight, so you've got to get like uh connecting flights and stuff so it's just a nightmare absolute nightmare but it, it's good fun it's part and parcel of uh being a pole vaulter really yeah um now you're on 571 olympic qualifying's 574 what, what are your thoughts on that counting into the trials um yeah um it's it's a difficult one with the years that we've had and kind of like um the competitions and stuff i, I believe i was in good shape indoors um i only did three competitions and i I kind of made a bit of a technical mistake in, in touring at the European Championships, which kind of cost me I didn't jump that high. Um, and me and my coach strongly believe that if, if I did maybe have a couple more um, competitions in indoors, I might have got the qualifier indoors, which would have took a bit of pressure off for the outdoors. Um, but I, I do believe I'm in shape um, to jump it, so my coach keeps on putting it as if when, not if, um, which I kind of like. It puts a lot of confidence in myself because he's confident in me to do it. So... Um, yeah, I'm just hoping, I'm, I'm not kind of aiming for them every comps, but because I kind of know I can do those heights, it's just kind of as and when I do it, I'm just going to enjoy each comp as it comes and, and see what I can get. Have you done it in training? Um, yeah, um, so I've been done over a real bar, I've done some bungees, so I know it doesn't really count and stuff, but um, yeah, it, it, when when I can train, we've done um, close to those heights and stuff, and when I've been in good shape and stuff, and um when I was doing the indoor comps, I, I attempted those heights. Like, I think out of the three comps I did, I attempted um, two twice. I did the 70s. Um, so I, I definitely know it's there. And I've, I've seen height over some bars and stuff. So it's just a fact of me not to keep on saying, oh, I can, I can, and actually just get my bum over the bar, really. And is Manchester a familiar arena to you? Could you? Is it possible there if the weather's favourable next Thursday? Yeah, definitely. Well, that's where Harry Harry Cobble jumped the the British record for pole vault so last year. So it's it's definitely a good place to to jump and stuff. Um, I haven't jumped there in a few years. Um, I was supposed to be last year for the the British champs, but it was I got a bit injured, so I couldn't. Um, so it's been a, it's been a while, especially outdoors. I've jumped indoors more recently, but outdoors um, I haven't jumped there in a, in a long, long time. So it'll be nice to to get back there. Yeah. And we we spoke uh, briefly about no hiding. It, it does happen in, in pole vault and high jump. Is is your thinking going into a competition? You've maybe got ten good vaults, and you you need to start the right height and and, and be 
not too not too weary by the time you get to personal best or Olympic qualifying heights. Um, yeah, definitely. Like, I'm I'm no stranger. I'm not going to be one of these people who says like, oh, I jump amazing every time. I actually no height in the British champs in 2019. I was um, going into it ranked first. I jumped the world qualifier uh, that year, and, and then I no heighted at the, the championships. So that ultimately means I, I didn't get selected for world championships that year. Um, so it does happen. Um, it can just be kind of a fluke and like just kind of you don't know why and it can go over in your head why and why. But yeah, you normally you normally pick. So with myself, we have a I normally have a starting height for the season. So it's normally at, at the moment it's about five thirty. So um, before competition and training, I wouldn't probably go higher than five thirty. I'll probably just put the bar at five thirty, like real bar and training. And I'll, my coach would be like, you have to try and clear that three times in a row and then we can stop. So as soon as I clear that three times in a row, I'm good. So it's kind of like getting that kind of cement in that first bar so you're comfortable after that first bar. We we spoke to uh, Chris Bennett uh, a, a short while ago and he's doing the hammer at the Manchester Invitational. He said he knows when it's a good throw at the point of release. He doesn't know it on, on turning, but, but as soon as he's let go of the hammer, he knows. When do you know you, you, the vault is spot on? Um, for myself, I kind of know from the takeoff, so kind of like just as I leave the floor, um, you can kind of, it's it's a big part of the takeoff is this, if you're going to get the right bend on the pole and kind of how you move through it, so you can kind of get a judge and get a good feel for it, like when you t hit that takeoff, and if, if you know it's a good takeoff, you, the rest of it just kind of like clicks into place and just goes where if it's a little bit not as good, you're going to have to work a bit harder to do other stuff, so it's, that's probably the best place to know when you know you're going to clear the bar or not that time. Um, who, who was your main opposition at Manchester Invitational? Or are you just, just going for the height? Um, so the, everyone's great. It's going to be a, a good competition with Adam Haig and um, Jack Thors. They're, they're the only two I know are doing it at the moment. I don't know who else is doing it, so I, ca I can't say on those where... Um, I, I know Jack Thors, he's, he's local, and he's, um, it'll be nice to see him back jumping. I haven't seen him jump for a while, and... Me and Adam have got a, we've jumped for years, but mainly I, I in all comps I never look at the competition because we're all good friends. I mean, I I always go for the height. I always just think like it's always about trying to beat yourself and stuff. So, yeah, that in the back of my head that five uh, that five seventy four and that five eighty is going to be there because that's what I'm that I really really wanting really. In in the past, um, pole vault was an event that athletes matured into. Uh, took it up in their late teens, early 20s, and, and were reaching some sort of peak near 30. That's kind of been uh, completely turned on its head, especially by Duplantis. What, what do you think is the difference? in? The, I mean, you're still a relatively young man yourself. What, what's been the difference with the new generation of pole vaulters coming through? Um, personally, I, I think it's they've had the opportunity to do it from a, a lot earlier age. Um, I, I know from experience myself, I didn't actually get the opportunity to do it till I was probably... Um, in like year eight of school, so I don't know what that is. Is that like maybe like thirteen or something, or like around that age? And um, yeah, I, I, these guys who are coming up who are really young, you look at them and like like Mondo, he's been jumping since he was like I don't know, since he was in diapers, really, wasn't he? Like he's got a pole vault pit in his back garden and stuff. So I feel like the accessibility for it and stuff, like more athletics tracks, um, more pole vault coaches and stuff, and. That's one thing that I'm trying to help with my coach Chris in the North East because there's only in the North East literally him and that's it. Um, so if you want to pull vault in the North East, you have to come to Gateshead and meet myself in Middlesbrough. Um, if that was back in the day, we used to have a pull vault coach in Middlesbrough, but um, he left. So if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have got the opportunity. So I, I feel as if it's just being able to give that, that opportunity at an early age and get them hooked because it is an enjoyable sport. And once that happens, then the the kind of age and people can like get like mondo like the young young kids and they're just flying high and beating all the all the professionals really if you're putting a bet on yourself uh, for next thursday what height would you bet it at oh i, I, <laughs> I don't like to bet because then it puts a bit of pressure on myself um so i i, I'm, I wouldn't really say a bet of what i want to jump I, I would like to say at least tenths like 70 or higher so even if i don't get it i would like to be up at about those heights uh, that would be a nice one but like what, what whatever will come will come because you never know what the weather and everything's going to be like but ideally i'd like to attempt in at least that uh, olympic qualifier